I remember it like it was yesterday. It was April 12th of 97. I was working at American Green Lawn Care. I just got home from work um, and I was talking to God. Now, at that time, I didn't know what I was doing was actually praying because I didn't have the Holy Spirit in me. But um, I thought I was just kicking it with the Lord. And I'm like, you know, God, I need you to show me you're real. I'm like, you know, I know what I've read about you and I hear what people have said about you. But I need you to show me that you're real. I'm like, you know, if you show me you're real, I'll live my life for you. I'll do music for you. Whatever it is you ask, I'll do it. And I'm talking to God. I'm like, you know, God, I look at brothers like Pop, Tupac Shakur. I look at brothers like Big, you know, Notorious B.I.G. And I see some of the same personality traits inside of me that you've placed inside of them. And I'm like, you know, God, they could have been used to bring so many people to Jesus. I'm like, I need you to show me that you're real. If you show me you're real, I'll submit. I'll do whatever it is you ask. I was done with the conversation at that point. There was no amen. I wasn't familiar with the things of God, so um, the conversation was done. But at that time, my phone rang, and it was my sister on the other end. My sister's name is Tasha. And she's like, yo, um, I'm about to go to the sneaker outlet. You know, I'm going to come get you, and we'll go, we'll go to the sneaker outlet. And initially, I said no. Because I had just gotten home from work. I just wanted to shower. I just wanted to relax. But she kept pressing me. She's like, nah, we're going to go out there. It's going to be real quick. We'll come right back. And so I'm thinking to myself, I haven't spent any time with my sister in a while. So I agreed. I'm like, alright, I'll go. Now at this particular time, I didn't like to wear seat belts. Ultimately, it was just me being lawless. But my justification was I didn't like to feel restrained. So my sister came and got me. Uh, she had a banging red Volvo at the time. So I got in the car, needless to say, I didn't put the seatbelt on. So we're driving, driving along. And um, I, I said to her, I'm like, you know, Tasha, I'm thinking about giving my life to the Lord. And she was like, you know, it's funny you say that, because just the other day I had a vision of you being a preacher. Tasha, watch out. Boom. Uh, this, this young lady, she ran a stop sign. Now, she was uninsured. She was unlicensed. Ultimately, she just wasn't even supposed to be driving. So when she hit my sister's car, my sister's car did a complete turn. The airbags came out. It was smoky and everything. Um, and I don't know if you know anything about Volvos, but they're created to sustain impact to the effect where the front of the car actually goes down so it doesn't crush the knees of whoever's in the front seat. So I hit my, uh, my eye on the rear view mirror, and we're looking at each other. And we're like, you know, you're all right, you're all right, get out, get out. So my sister got out her door and I got out the passenger door and as soon as I got out the passenger door, my eyebrow split open and I heard there's no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. So I'm bugging at this time. I'm like, you know, who is this that's talking? So lo and behold, the, the lady driving her car, she must have let her hands off the wheel because she was like inches away from somebody's front porch. But if you looked at her vehicle, you couldn't even tell she was in an accident. So again, this was BC. This was before Christ. So I, I get out and, you know, and she, she walking over toward us and she like, what happened? And I'm like, you know, what the F you mean what happened? So, you know, I'm walking toward her and my sister grabbed me back. She like, you know, as long as we all right, you know, I can get another vehicle. So at this time, a Caucasian couple came out, and they had a towel, and they had some ice. And then I heard that voice again say, um, the same people you used to persecute is coming to you in your time of need. Realize it's bigger than a race or religion or a color. So I'm really bugging at this time. I'm like, okay, who is this talking to me? So I'm inside of the foyer of their house, and my aunt and uh, my, my, my aunt and my mom's arrived on the scene. And we were waiting for the ambulance also. Now, when my mom and, and my aunt arrived on the scene, all they saw was the car, and then they saw my sister. But uh, upon seeing the car, you know, they were hysterical because if you look at the vehicle, you'd question, did anybody get out of there alive? So, you know, the ambulance came on the scene. I got in the back of the ambulance. They took my Bible signs, you know, asked me that I want to ride with them or ride with my family. I opted to ride with my family, which was a good thing because ambulance rides are crazy expensive. But lo and behold, I get in the back seat of my aunt's car and I just start crying uncontrollably. I'm like, Lord, you just showed me you were real. There's no doubt in my mind that had I gone through that windshield and died, which I should have, um, I would have been busting hell wide open. So, you know, because I'm thinking I got to be in a physical building in order to accept Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. That next day, which was April 13th of 97, I went to church. And so I, I don't remember what the sermon was about. I don't remember none of that. But at the appointed time, 
when he gave the altar call, you know, I went up there and I said the prayer of salvation, accepted Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. And then I heard that voice again, which I now know was the voice of the Holy Spirit say to me, this isn't where I want you to fellowship at. I want you to go back to that place where you first started learning about me at, which was another place of fellowship. So, you know, lo and behold, I did so. Um, later that week, I took two of my peoples to my sister's house because the car was towed. So they towed the car back to my sister's house. So, you know, we arrived and they bugged and they like, yo, you got out of this? I'm like, yeah. So I went to the passenger side and I tried to pull the door open and it wouldn't budge. I went around to my sister's side, went in, I was kicking the door, the door wouldn't move. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, God, it was only your sovereignty that allowed me to get out of that, get out of that vehicle with no problems. And um, again, the day that I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart as Lord and Savior was April 13th of 97. It hasn't all been sweet. There have been some highs, there's been some lows, but it has all been Jesus. It's been the most absolute greatest day of my life and I wouldn't change it for a thing. So that's how I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Be saved and be born again. Godspeed.